So, today, here we are. We bought a wood splitter. Obviously, it's used. Uh, so, it doesn't run right now. Um, the guy that had it before me said he was using it, the engine was running, and the cylinder advanced and then just stopped. And the motor was still running, but he couldn't get it to go forward or backwards or anything. So, um, it's been sitting a while, and there's a few things I found that are wrong with it or need to be fixed before we can even start with it. Is one is this fuel line right here is um, is all cracked up, and uh, it looks like the oil needs to be changed, but we won't really worry about it. It's got enough in it to get it kind of started. Um, that and then it doesn't have a recoil starter or anything on it. It just has this um, this shaft, you know, nothing to pull on. So, but it does have this electric starter, which did looks like it's working. It's it, it at least it's moving. So we're gonna put some a battery in here, which it already has a little cradle for it. Somebody thought through that, and then uh, a battery cable on here, grounded underneath there, so we can at least push it and turn the engine over. So. Uh, oh, and yeah, so the fuel line, we're going to, we're going to change that out. So let's see if we can work on the engine first and then we'll figure out hydraulics. Hopefully that's not diesel. So I got the battery installed and some cables ran a positive up to the starter switch and this ground wire hooked to a, a bolt on the frame over here uh, and then hooked to the to the negative. Uh, but let's let's try it out and see if it see if it turns over. Oh there it goes. Oh, look at that. So uh, now we're gonna try to Try to get it started. Let's let's try that out. Let's see. All right, that's something. Get a wrench off of there. Ooh, that's promising. Gonna cut it off for now and, uh, and then uh, we're gonna check the hydraulic fluid make sure it's got enough of that in there um, and kind of see what happens so let's put a little bit of hydraulic fluid in there because I know it's low so we'll go ahead and add a little bit this is ISO 46 hydraulic oil it uh, has rust inhibitors and whatnots in it and it also prevents foaming which is a big thing with hydraulic pumps you don't want any foaming and air in the system and whatnot I'm just gonna look down in here and see if I can see any I can't uh, 
I'm gonna try to find something to stick down in there like a little dipstick. So what I got was a little piece of fence wire here. So I'm just gonna use this rag and kind of wipe it off, clean it off a little bit. And uh, we're gonna stick it down in there, kind of mark it right there. So here it is about right here. So uh, I've got a little ways to go. So let's keep adding some. One thing I'd like to mention from my experiences is ethanol gas has caused a lot of problems with my engines, uh, two cycle and four cycle. So I had a, a, tr a chainsaw that the gas just chewed up. I must have put the wrong stuff in or didn't realize I had gotten it, I guess, anyways. Uh, eat up the carburetor gaskets and everything and fuel line and uh, I believe that's what caused this problem in this one so I'm just going to keep running non-ethanol gas in this log splitter here until whenever but uh, it caused all kinds of problems with my uh, rototiller chainsaw um, and my generator, uh, it it made the uh, float stick on my generator, so I had to get a brand new carburetor for that because it it ate up the uh, the housing because it was a, like a cast aluminum kind of thing, and it it ate the housing up and caused the float to hang up, and dirt kept getting in everything. So anyway, it's just a little word of the wise. Try to stay away from ethanol gas in these small engines, especially older ones, and uh, try to find some of that non-ethanol. You'll see it at some gas stations, and it'll be uh, more or less a um, like a regular old pump where it's not so digital, at least the ones I've found are, are that. So we've still got a little ways to go, a couple more inches, so keep adding got some. Hydraulic fluid filled up. Um, it took two gallons. This is completely empty, was full, so I guess it was low. Sure. Uh, we're gonna start this thing up and see if we can get this to move back and forth. Uh, let's see if it even moves. But it started up no problem before, so let's see if it starts up now. Well, <laughs> that is the very first time we got that up and running and actually <laughs> splitting wood. Uh, so I am super stoked uh, because this is so awesome. Uh, we, we've been wanting a wood splitter for a long time. We bought our farm, you know, and uh, we've got tons, literally tons, not joking, of wood uh, up there to split, cut up and split. And... Uh, this is just a huge blessing to actually have this thing running and splitting and, and it, it works. So, <laughs> great. All right, that's enough for now. Uh, the only other thing I'm gonna do is actually, uh, is put a filter on right here uh, because I noticed there's no filtration in this whole system. So I'm just gonna pop this off, put a little nipple uh, filter housing, a little spin on filter housing and uh, and plumb that right back into there and into into the output of the uh, the, the valve. So. Uh, maybe 
Maybe we'll shoot that next time, but for now, we'll enjoy using the wood.